Hey guys, it's Hidden Gems, back again after quite some time. Now, I'm going to talk about something on this channel that most people probably wouldn't expect me to talk about, and that is Star Trek. Most specifically, the Star Trek Litverse, which I didn't even know existed until uh, a couple months ago, really, um, after the release of Nemesis. There was a basically a concise effort to make a Star Trek lit verse in terms of, and what that means is, okay, so first of all, we need to get out of the way. The Star Trek novels are not considered canon. We weren't in a situation like with Star Wars where the books were considered canon. That was not the case with Star Trek. But. The, after Nemesis, they did the next best thing, and that was to basically make um, all their novels internally consistent. So it was basically like it was a the next best thing to the post-Return of the Jedi timeline. They made it consistent to itself. It wasn't canon to the movies or the TV show um, or anything else. Um, Star Trek canon is only considered the live-action and I guess now some of the animated stuff. Um, that's the only thing, stuff that's canon to Star Trek. So, I never really bothered with Star Trek novels because I went, eh, why am, why am I going to waste my time on that? It's not canon. It's not going to affect anything in, you know, in the TV shows or the video games or whatever. Um, same thing, though. Video games aren't canon. Uh, only... Like I just, I'm repeating myself here, but only live action stuff is canon, so I didn't waste my time. Um, but like I said, a few months ago, I learned that there was this whole universe of, um, of Star Trek novels that are canon to themselves. See, before 2000, there were Star Trek novels, tons of them. I mean, since TOS, there were tons of them. Uh, but they were none of you know they weren't can they weren't even canon to themselves. Uh, there would be trilogies that were just their own little canon. There'd be one-offs that were canon to certain things that to themselves and to other things. There was no everything was just a mess. So I just never wasted my time. Um, but uh, yeah, once I learned that, I went okay. I'm gonna dip my toes in um, in some Star Trek books. And um, the first one I picked was was good i mean i was i was pleasantly surprised i my expectations were pretty low um because i know just from um over just from over the internet um that star trek novels are very mixed and that's true with star wars too there's plenty of bad star wars novels not not quite as many um from what i understand um i mean, I sh I mean i've read most of them but um i feel like star wars has a little bit more quality control when it comes to uh, novels, because I guess, like I said at the time, um, you know, this it was all canon. It was all considered canon, so I, I think there was a little bit more quality control, and you had George there kind of as a guiding hand to kind of um, keep a relative, you know, con quality consistency there. Um, Star Trek didn't have that, because Star Trek, um, especially, you know, um, after Gene Roddenberry died, there wasn't really one person that really was a guiding hand in Star Trek. You had multiple people uh, controlling, you know, you'd bo I don't know exactly how everything worked, but I know, you know, there was a, there was different people that ran the franchise. You didn't have the singular person that said, you know, this is good, this is not, you know, this doesn't follow my vision, this doesn't, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so you don't quite have that same, you know, quality control that you did with Star Wars, but... Um, from what I understand, though, most of the lit verse stuff is good, and that that's I think where I kind of wanted to dive in because I went, okay, they've got a, they've kind of got more of a consistency, they got quality control. All right, here we go. I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, so uh, my first book here is Star Trek Prometheus, and um, this is about whoops, this is about <clears throat> the start the Prometheus, the Star Trek Prometheus, which was in an episode of Voyager. And that's going to segue into my, and I'll get, I'm not going to give much about the book. I'm just going to give a little summary like I normally do because I want you to go read it. 
but um, this is, again, my, like I normally do on this channel. I just want to kind of give my my journey, you know, with, with the franchise I'm talking about here. Um, so, uh, Star Trek was, was um, uh, kind of odd for me. I didn't um, really grow up watching it. Um, I remember my dad watching TNG a little bit. Uh, TNG was before my time. Uh, I was already, it was already pretty much all said and done uh, by the time I was old enough to really watch, um, you know, adult television. Uh, um, so, I didn't catch that. Uh, same thing with D Space Nine. That was a little bit before my time. Um, what got me into Star Trek was Voyager. And um, I know Voyager has a lot of mixed opinions. Um, I, it holds a very special place in my part. It's a show that got me into Trek. Um, I don't really consider myself a Trekkie. I do like Star Trek quite a bit. Um, Star Wars, obviously you can tell, is more my franchise. Uh, but um, I remember when I was a kid, um, I was on, I'd stay up, around the time I first started staying up late, on Saturday nights they would play reruns. And... Um, uh, Voyager, and it was still running at, at the time, I think it was just, I was on its last season, because most shows, and they still do this, they would start rerunning them after they got to about 100 episodes or something, and, um, so they were starting to rerun it, and I'm like, oh, I'll check this out, and my friend, same thing, he started watching it, and we both just got, just sucked into it completely, um, not, you know, completely blind here, but, uh, Voyager's, uh, that to me, Voyager's a great entryway Star Trek show, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, they all kind of are, but uh, I liked it. It was kind of a clean slate. You didn't have to worry. There was no, you didn't really have to know who anybody was. You didn't have to know who the Borg were or, you know, Q or any of these groups. You know, it was kind of a, it was, it did its own thing. So there wasn't all the baggage or the Romulans and the Klingons and all this stuff. Um, it was basically kind of a fresh, uh, mostly fresh, you know, take on it. Um, and yeah, I just, I got sucked into it. Uh, I watched it every night <laughs> for, you know, for all those. Uh, I I think when I started watching it, they were already on season four, so I only saw the last four seasons. Um, and I'm going in, I'm, I'm actually re-watching it now to see the early seasons that I missed. But, um, so yeah. Voyager, that was my entryway into it, and it also helped that this game came out around the same time, so it was a double whammy, it was like, oh, they're showing the reruns, and then boom, this comes out around that time, um, which, this is a fantastic game, by the way, Elite Force, I'm not going to talk about that too much, uh, I'll maybe do another video on that some other day, but, uh, yeah, so Voyager got me, <laughs> and, um, so this, segueing back to this, this this has to do with the ship that was introduced on a Voyager episode, and it's an advanced starship. It can separate into four different parts, each controllable um, by four different four separate crews. Um, but um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Honestly, I was not I was not expecting to enjoy it, especially considering the uh, the mostly mixed opinions on on this on this series. It's a three book series. I've only read the first. Um, I mean, I'm going to get the other two at some point, and, um, uh, but, uh, yeah, oh, and there's another thing, I got this at, uh, <laughs> I got this at Dollar General, whoops, that's another thing that helped, three bucks, I saw that for three bucks, it was the first in the series, uh, this was at Dollar General, now, great place to get books, but, um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, it's got pretty mixed opinions, and it's actually, um, it's good. I like it. It's a German novel, actually. It was, it was in, it was written in German, and it was, I think the, I'm gonna butcher his name here, uh, Bern, Berned Propelles, I, I'm not sure how you say his name, sorry there, um, the, he wrote it in German, and then Christian Humberg, that might be the way around, um, translated it, so, um, but I, Really, there was there was maybe a little bit of translation, very minor, couple couple of words here and there, uh, but 99.9% .9 of it was um, very solid, solidly written, um, just solid book. And um, uh, just quick summary: 
Um, and, that, and again, that's in... Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. <clears throat> kind of like Voyager, this, it, it, this is a good entry point uh, to Star Trek lit, to Star Trek period, because you get a fresh crew. It's a completely new group of people. Um, from what I understand, never been in any other novels or comics or anything. And uh, you get it's you get to you get to meet all these cool new people, tons of different alien races, which I really liked. I like I liked that 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 was something that I always thought Star Wars did better than Star Trek. Star Wars, you know, always had all these different races, especially in the EU. Um, there are all these different races, whereas Star Trek I always felt was a little too human centric. And I feel like this author really uh, broke that. They really, they, it, it really, actually, actually, honestly, almost feels like an EU novel. It almost feels like a 90s, like a Bantam era Star Trek, excuse me, Star Wars novel. In that, in so that, it, he used the, the premise to its fullest capacity. I felt like he used, he, there's Andorians, there's, there's Klingons, there's, you know, um, there's, he even uses some of the, uh, I can't remember their name right now, but the he even uses some of some characters from Voyager, like Shell, who was in who he's such a minor. He was in Elite Force. He was in he was in like one episode of Voyager. Uh, he just used really like really minor characters and really minor races, and really like you know I I could tell he really dug in and went okay, what is this race? You know what they what do they do? What's their culture? What's you know? And he even he even came up with his own new race, and which I really I I like when authors do that. I know some people get been out of shape on you know in terms of um you know whatever calling it fan fiction or whatever but um i, I like that i like when especially because i'm a relatively well-versed star trek fan because i i did go back and watch pretty much you know the rest of the other shows don't i don't know if i made that clear i've, I've watched more than voyager so i'm pretty well versed in star trek um so to me uh, that's cool that he went okay i'm gonna come up with a new race uh, I can't remember the name of them right now, but uh, uh, the Reneo. He comes up with a race called the Reneo. Um, these kind of demon-looking. These they're not evil though. See, that's the thing. They're red. They're almost like the Chiss in Star Wars. They're they're red-skinned, except they're red-skinned and red-eyed. They're 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 kind of demonic-looking, but they're not evil. You know, they have this they have this very uh, secular kind of religion and culture, all this, but. Um, so I like that he did that. I, I liked really pretty much everything he did. It, it really feels like a TNG or a Voyager episode from the late nineties. It, it was a really solid, fun story. Um, you, you, like I said, quick summary, you meet the, you meet the crew, the Prometheus, the Prometheus is basically sent off. There's a, there's a, um, there's actually two stories you get. You get the Prometheus and the Starfleet perspective and you get the Klingon perspective you get this whole <clears throat> you kind of get this dual sided perspective on everything which is really cool but the basic story is that there's a I don't, again I don't want to reveal too much there's there's two space stations that are attacked there's a <clears throat> Federation space station that gets attacked and there's a Klingon uh, mining facility that gets attacked and it's all fingers are basically pointing to the Reneo, this this really mysterious race that's just very, excuse me, very um, insular, and they don't have a whole lot of contact with anybody else. But um, you know, they they find some evidence. I think the, the Federation finds some evidence that this 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 group of terrorists or whatever are basically blowing up facilities. They they don't, and they're they're basically an anti. They don't. They don't like the Federation, the Klingons. They don't like anybody. They really don't like. They don't like anybody. They don't like the the, <clears throat> the Cardassians. They don't like anybody. So they're they're basically saying, yeah, no, we just we want to be left alone. We want we don't want anybody talking to us. Nothing. They're isolationists, I guess you could say. Um, so that's what kind of spurs the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I don't want to go too into it, but um, yeah, it, it's it's really. It's fun. I enjoyed it very well. It's ignore the reviews. Uh, I I I would give it at least an eight. I wouldn't maybe quite say it goes in the nine territory. I'd probably say it was an eight. Uh, it dragged a little bit in the middle. Um, there it has a few problems. I'm not going to say it's perfect or anything. Uh, but for uh, my first Star Trek novel, I was very impressed. 
I was very, uh, and just learning about learning about this whole lit verse that there's there's all this stuff, and it's it really it's almost like Star Wars for me. It's almost when I kind of first discovered the U, it's almost like that. Like oh my, like all this stuff happened. Like I, well, spoiler alert. I guess I'll just say some of it. You know, there's just stuff like the Borg invading Earth, and um, you know, there's just crazy, there's crazy stuff like that. People dying, people being born. Um, it's just there's a lot. There's a lot. So I'm I might do more Star Trek book reviews. There's not a whole lot of people doing them on YouTube. There's a, there's a couple there's a couple guys. Uh, there's a guy. <clears throat> uh, I can't remember right now. Um, but there's a there's a guy that just started doing them. I don't, so I don't want to overshadow him too much. Um, but um, yeah. No, I was um, I was pleasantly surprised. I, I like I said, I was at Dollar General um, a couple months ago, um, and I just I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna give a Star Trek book a shot, and I was I was glad I did. It opened up kind of a new a new door for me um, for uh, licensed fiction. So I'm I'm definitely gonna read more Star Trek books. I'm planning on reading the rest of the series. I don't know if I'll do individual reviews. I'll probably just do what I normally do, and this will just be my overall. Because from what I understand, the books get even better. So I'm, I'm just gonna overall say, eight at least for the first book, for sure. But uh, yeah, give it a shot. And uh, this is it for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to increase the frequency of videos here. I know I've been I've been kind of out of AFK here for the past few months, but um, yeah, expect more. I'll be back. See you guys next time.